So let's pick the top four for the position. And we will tell you uh, why. We'll pick the top four and then uh, we'll tell you why. Once we manage the top four, we will then reduce it, reduce it. We will not be able to reduce it into one because then we'll be taking the job of the president and making the appointment for him. Uh, but we're going to reduce it into two and tell you strengths and weaknesses, pros and cons, merits and demerits. Then you can pick it up from there and decide where you think this thing is going. Three minutes on top of there at 11 o'clock. They'll give me some time uh, to finish the story before they take us off. Okay, so top four. Uh, Justice Yoni Kulendi, pole position on the left. Uh, uh, Justice uh, Avril Lovelace Johnson, former wife of Justice Eni Yeboah. Justice Gertrude Tokonu, uh, also in second pole position. And this is Mr. Justice Bafuboni, uh, about whom a case, a very, very strong case, is made by his friends for him to ascend the throne as the Lord Chief Justice. Which of these men or this woman takes over from Justice Eni Yeboah? Okay, drop one and let's pick the three and let's move on uh, to those we have and then we'll pick the final two. Are you able to drop one? Okay, no, I should be dropping one and then I should have three. I think they don't have three. Uh, they only have two. So they drop two. They drop Lovelace Johnson, uh, which is correct, and they drop Justice Bafuboni. But let me tell you a bit about Justice Bafuboni. Uh, supporters of Justice Bafuboni say that in the history of the, uh, of the Chief Justice thing, if you can understand what I mean, uh, apart from Fred Apalu and Georgina Wood, no Chief Justice has done more than four years. Sounds interesting, sounds correct. Akokosa, 1960 to 63. So Sakodiado to 66. Akufado, three years. Uh, Banaman, two years. And then uh, EMP Sowa, three years. And Apalu comes from 77 all the way. And then after Apalu is EMP Sowa, three years. Filipacha, three years. Aban, three years. Redu, three years. Aqua, two years. Georgina Wood comes in all the way. So the case being made is that apart from Fred Apalu and Georgina Wood, nobody has been Chief Justice for more than four years. Now, Bafuboni says that if it's about seniority, he is the most senior, and uh, he was going to retire in 2026. So why don't we let him pick it up for the four years and then get to talk or no, it's only 60. Uh, Justice Kulendi, as I speak, is not actually even 60 yet. And then you have Lovelace Johnson also around 60. And then they can take over. That if you give to these contenders, they are there for 10 years and nobody... Da, da, da. So that's the case for uh, Justice Bafuboni. Think about it and tell me what you think. Okay, now let's come to the big story. So the contention is going to be here, really here. Justice Yoni Kulendi and Justice Gertrude Tokonu. Now, if I were making the decision, and I, I, can, I can even mention a few other people. I were making the decision... If the decision was being made by Archbishop Duncan Williams, if the decision was being made by, who else? I was going to say John Dramani Mahama, but I have to be very careful about that, so I won't say it. <laughs> if the decision, so me, Archbishop Duncan Williams, uh, Bishop Ajin Asari, uh, uh, who else? Uh, there are certain people that if they are making the decision, it will go straight to Kulendi. No pen, no cap, no thinking, no. It will be Emmanuel Kulendi. He will be the Chief Justice. But the decision maker is someone else, President Akufuado. Now, if the decision is President Akufuado, someone will tell me, somebody looking at me will tell me that, ah, you are telling me that if you may be to make the decision or if Duncan Willis is to go to Kulendi, but none of you is closer to Kulendi than Akufuado. That is correct as well. So if it's Akufuado making the decision, and Kulendi is involved in a decision. Why are we having a discussion? That's the point I'm coming to. That's what I'm coming to explain to you. Get, 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 this, get, this, get this right. So, uh, 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 so you, you, know, you know my relationship with, with, my relationship with say, Bolare, or my relationship with Kojo Ponkroma, or, or something like that, you know. So, so that you know that Kojo Ponkroma and Paul Adomotri are close. Yes. Kojo Ponkroma and Paul Adomotri and Bolare are close. Okay. So you know that Paul Adomotri is looking for has a folk chairman. And Bolare is the decision maker. It will go to Paul. Everyone will. That's the kind of situation we are dealing with. The question is, ah, Yoni Kulendi is up for chief justice and the Anakufado government, and you are having a discussion? I, I don't you know the two men? Don't you know where they've come from? Don't you know? I mean, I can talk about myself. The first time I began to engage with Anakufado, this is uh, sometime in 98, when he was a member of parliament and I was a student, you know, I engaged with him. Just give us five more minutes. 
I engage with him. When I, I went to his office in Adabraka, where I, I ended up going daily, when he saw me, he asked Akuto Power, or Philip Addison, one of them, I think it was Philip. He asked Philip that, who does Paul remind you of? And Philip couldn't quite remember. And the president said, doesn't Paul remind you of Yoni? I didn't know who Yoni was. That's what he said. Doesn't Paul remind you of Yoni? I didn't know who Yoni was. And then Philip said, oh, yeah, I think he does. And then he told me, because he knew I didn't, he said, Yoni has traveled. He's studying abroad. He's a member of this firm. When he comes, I will introduce you to him. I said, yes, sir. About a year later, or a year and a half later, I walked into the office, and as I did almost every afternoon. And I said, was, ah, I, I wanted to tell you something. He said, aha, Yoni has come. Mr. Myers, those who know the story will understand the name Myers. Mr. Myers, call me Yoni. So nice, dashing young man in a blue shirt, I remember, walks into the presence of him. He said, do you know this man? And Yoni said, I've been interacting with him. I've been listening to him on Joy FM sometimes. He said, but he reminds me of you. So Kulendi looked at me and said, wow, okay. He said, so Paul, I said, yes, yeah, okay, from today I'll call you Paulus. And then he shake my hand and he took me out of Adonado's office, to his office. That's the, that's the, this is how many years ago. So if Akufuado has a decision to make, and I am a journalist to make a presentation on how we think Akufuado is likely to make that decision, and that decision involves Kulendi, we shouldn't be talking. So why are we talking? Why do we have two people on the screen when the decision is Akufuado's decision to make and it involves Emmanuel Kulendi? Why are we talking? Okay, so this is why we are talking. All right, let's make the case for uh, Getru Tokonu. Let's build up the case for Getru Tokonu first. Then we'll come to the case for Kulendi. We'll come to the case against Getru Tokonu and the case against Yoni Kulendi, okay? All right, now, the... Uh, um, the part of the reason why there has to be a decision, there has to be a conversation, is that Akufuado is not making this decision on his own. That's, that's part of the reason. Akufuado is not making this decision on his own. He's going to make the decision, typical Akufuado, with a lot of consultation. That's, the, that's who he has, we have found him to be as a politician, especially as a president. He is so fixated on consultation that sometimes the, his inner circle people get... Distraught, they will tell, oh, the man is going to say he's going to consult. That's the reason why it's not simple for Kulendi. Because Akufado is going to make the decision based on his natural uh, disposition to, to, to consult people around uh, his political table when he's making his decision. In that consultation, Akufado does not always win. He doesn't always, in fact, he's lost one recently. The dates for the MPP's Delegates Congress, Akufado lost some of it. He won some, he lost some. He wanted a certain date. He didn't quite get it. They tried to do the consultation and brought it to the middle. So the danger is that in making these decisions, Akufado will consult. And he will consult his inner political circle, especially his political party. And he does not always prevail. He doesn't. That's why Kulendi supporters are edgy. That what if he takes it into this, his enormous consultations that never end, and he comes back and says, listen, I did my best. I told my party, but they gave me reasons why it shouldn't be you. I'm sorry about it. You are my man, but it cannot be. That's, that is possible. That's possible. Very, very possible. Okay. Now, Getu Tokonu, uh, Getu Araba Esaba Tokonu, 60 years, born 11 September 1962, called to the bar in 1986. She has a BA in law and a postgraduate diploma in international law. She joined the judicial service in 2004 as a justice of the high court. Now, remember when she was called to the bar, 1986. Keep that in mind, 1986. Get to talk on who is called to the Ghana Bar Association to practice as a, a barrister and solicitor in 1986. She, came, she comes with a BA law at the University of Ghana, and she, she later on gets an MA postgraduate diploma in international law. Okay, so that's how long she's been at the bar. Now, she joins the bench as a high court judge in 2004. Note that as well. In 2004, Getu Tokonu is nominated by John Ajikum Kufo to become a judge of the Superior Court of Judicature as a high court judge. That's President Kufo's uh, photograph. President Kufo is the one who nominated Getu Tokonu in 2004. I'm looking at the case for Tokonu, the case against Tokonu, and then I'll come to the case for Kulendi and the case against Kulendi. Okay, all right. Now, 
Uh, just uh, uh, okay. Let me get back to the CV. Thank you for President Kufuor's photograph. Anyway, all right. Now, uh, in 2004, she joins the the High Court Commercial Division, appointed to the Court of Appeal in 2012. That's the interesting political twist about the, uh, 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 Justice Tokono, which is a case for her. She's appointed by President Kufuor in 2004. Nominated, I have to say, because the appointment process is a nomination and a parliamentary hearing and a swearing in, so it's, it's divided democratically. But the president is the most important person because he does the first nomination. So Justice Tokone is nominated in 2004 by Jay Kufo. In 2012, Justice Tokone is promoted to the Court of Appeal, guess who, by Professor Mills. That's interesting for her. That's a plus in her career as a, as a, a barrister and a judge. Okay, so in 2012, Professor Mills promotes Justice Tokono. And then in 20, uh, where's the CV? Uh, and then in 2019, President Akufuado promotes uh, uh, the lady Judge Araba to the Supreme Court in 2019. So that, that's her history, that's her background, that's her career. Not much real political talk and all of that, but this is it. Now, what is the case, uh, potential case against Justice Tokonu? The case against Justice Tokonu, for those who think that they love her but she shouldn't become Chief Justice, is that they say we've had too many women in the recent past. We've had Georgina Wood for 10 years, then we had Sophia Kufu after, after her, then there was an intervention of a man in Yeboa, and then you go back to the woman again. That's, is, it a, is it a good argument? Is it a bad argument? I don't know. Is it a good argument to say, yes, let's have more women? Some people think like that. Sometimes I think like that. Not just relating to this one, but generally when we are talking about women in control, it sometimes it's better. Okay. But the other counter argument is that, look, we are doing affirmative action. Haven't we overdone it? We have done Georgina Wood. We have done Sophia. And now you're going to add Justice Tokonu as well. You know how the thing They're going to grumble like that. So that's also happening. And I'm telling you, it's going on. We have two weeks to finalize it. And the key people are being bombarded with phone calls every day. The Attorney General, the outgoing Chief Justice, the President, former Chief Justice. A lot is going on. Justice Tokonu also is said to belong to a certain interesting uh, religious cabal in the legal system. You see, those who are make the argument against Tokonu make the argument about how she's a product of something in the legal system that needs to be deconstructed at this time. That edifice, that context of the legal system, describes a certain group of people who have controlled the institutions of legal learning and the expressions of law in Ghana, they say, for the last 30 years. Who are this group of people? They include uh, our uncle Samokujeto. They include Nena Megache. They include Georgina Wood. A little bit of Sophia Kufu and, and that, that, uh, that group of people. It is said that Justice Tokonu is a product from that system that has controlled the institutions of learning and the institutions of practicing law for the last 30 years. And some people think that we need to change that. To change that, you have to have Kulendi as the Lord Chief Justice. So that's the case four. The four is experience, politically it seems to be balanced, savvy, woman, senior to Kulendi in almost everything. Senior to Kulendi at the bar. She was called in 1986. Kulendi was called in 94, almost 10 years difference. And then at the bench, she came in 2000. That she had had such a good experience at the bench. She's gone through the Superior Court of Judicature. That's very powerful. She's been a uh, 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 High Court judge, Court of Appeal judge, and Supreme Court judge. Now, if you're looking for somebody to run the administration of justice as Chief Justice, you need a kind of person who has gone through the process that way and Justice Tokonu. Uh, guess that's clearly for her. All right, let's move on to Justice uh, Kulendi and see now what we have to say. Okay, now Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi is 59 years old, born on 29th November 1963. All right, so in age, uh, Justice Tokonu is a year older than Justice Kulendi. Okay, Kulendi was called to the bar in 1994. So in terms of being called to the bar, Justice Tokonu was called to the bar almost 10 years before Kulendi was called to the bar. All right, he's qualified with an LLB from the University of Ghana, and he has an MA in International Security and Military Relations. Okay, this is what he was studying when I met the president, and the president said, Kulendi is studying, he'll come back and I'll introduce you. All right, he joined the judicial service in 2020 on appointment as a justice of the Supreme Court. So one of the cases against Justice Kulendi is that uh, his experience with the judicial service is very, very short. So uh, perhaps, if you're thinking of Chief Justice, perhaps you have to look elsewhere. All right. But the main case that MPP people, NPP people make against Justice Kulendi is Justice Kulendi's uh, inability to present himself at the election petition of 2013. That has been said over and over again. Okay. Now, 
uh, there are two sides to that conversation. People who support Kulendi say that, but the MPP people, they know why Justice Kulendi didn't attend that uh, election petition. And beyond the election petition, and since 2017, they know what Justice Kulendi has done. They all know. Yes, they all know. So that's what the Kulendi supporters say. But when they say he didn't attend election 20 petition, uh, 13, 2013 petition, it's about this story. When the petition occurred, uh, all the lawyers who had sort of worked under Nana Akufuado came together. They were no longer working in his, in his law firm. Akufuado Prempe and Co. was there. People like Attorney General Goffrey Dami were there. But some of the founding members had left. In fact, almost all of them. Frank Davis, Philip Addison, uh, Atachia, and Justice Kulendi. They had all left to set up their own law firm. I think even Kwame Okufu was out. Now, they came together and said, in spite of the fact that we have left, this is the man who has taught us law. This is the man who has given us a livelihood. This is the man who has given us a life. This is the man who has given us a name. This is his most important moment. He's going to court to fight an election he believes he had won. We all, some of us, also believe that he won the election. Now, let us go to him and tell him that he need not find lawyers. We are his lawyers. He need not pay us. We will pay the money for it and run the show for him and hope that we can convince the Supreme Court that he won the election. So they had this meeting, and then they went to see the president. In those days, they used to call him C1, candidate number one. And they said to him, that C1, we are your boys. We, we are your people. We, we are not without you. So now that you, you are looking for lawyers to file the petition, we have just told Obeche Belamte that we, the former founding members of Akufado Prempe and Co., and the current Akufado Prempe and Co., we shall come together and fight this case for you. And the president was particularly grateful. So he didn't have to pay a dime. And he felt rewarded that all my life as a lawyer, this is what I was looking for. I am happy with what these boys are doing. And, I'm, I'm, and, and they gave the president a lot of life. His, his face beamed with joy when they told him that we are going to represent you. That is what they hold against Justice Kulay. That Why was he not part of it? Now, let me take you back to the courtroom. Election petition 2013. This is the list of the lawyers that presented themselves without being paid to stand for Akufuado's view of the matter that he, Nanado Danko Akufuado, had been elected in 2012. These are the lawyers. Not appear for the petition. Sound, sound. You say it better is gone off. With me, Frank Davis. Alex Quino. Akutu Ampa Nana Asanti Bedetu Kwame Mboko Akuf Kweku Isifi. Gottfried Yebuatami. Egbert Fable Jr. and Professor Kenneth Ajiman Atefa. Hmm. That's heavy, isn't it? That's heavy. I had goose pimples watching that video again. I don't know what uh, Justice Kulendi does when he watches that video. I don't know what Philip Addison does, but that is heavy. So that's the team. That's the team. For how many months? From November to August, is focused to deliver Akufuado's election petition. One, did they succeed? I don't know. Many people think they did. They lost the verdict, but they won the case. They definitely did win the case in the eyes of public opinion. They lost the verdict, and that reflected in election 2016's petition. Will that play on Akufuado's mind when he begins to consider his boy? Justice Emmanuel Yoni Kulendi. Yoni Kulendi is Akufado's trophy, if you can say that. Godfrey Dami, you saw there, is also Akufado's trophy. 
Now, Akufado has a trophy in the Attorney General. If Akufado has a trophy in the former Attorney General, he has a trophy in the new, the current Attorney General, would he want to pick up another trophy in the new and next Chief Justice? I don't know. The decision for him. But who and whom are helping him make that decision will decide where this matter goes. The case for Kulendi is that he is Akufado's trophy. He comes out of the loins of the president. He is from the genes of the president. That's the case for Kulendi. The case against Kulendi, that with the case for him, why was he not present in 2013? That's a case that the party people are making against him. If I'm making a decision, I'll go to Justice Kulendi. I, do, I, I can't turn anywhere else. I'm not the decision maker. The decision is Archbishop Duncan Williams to be Justice Kulendi. He will not turn left or right. But the decision is Akufuado and some other people that we may never know, depending on who the president decides to consult. <laughs>